Hey everyone, Mike here. A lot of people are still waiting patiently for the Starlink service. With some recent developments, there's now a trick some people are using to get their Starlink service now without waiting. But there are some important considerations you need to know before you try it. All the details coming up. For a while, the limiting factor slowing down the rollout of Starlink has been the production rate of the actual user terminals or dishes. Supply chain issues and just general scaling up of manufacturing caused some delays over the past few months. It appears from the outside that those delays have now been overcome. The limiting factor now appears to be some combination of satellite capacity in orbit and ground station capacity. And the reason I say that is because of the new official Starlink service map. So if you take a look at the map, you can see how Starlink divides the world up into these hexagon cells. For each cell, it can be black for no service, dim for waitlist, meaning service is available in the cell, but they're not taking any more users right now, and the bright green ones, which means uh, you can actually sign up for service and get your dish immediately. It's these bright green cells, and you can see there are a lot in less populated areas that makes me say that the hardware isn't really a limiting factor. They can make the hardware at least fast enough that they don't need to put people in a wait list if they use one of these bright green cells. Now another recent development, which I've covered in previous videos, is the new roaming functionality, or Starlink portability, which lets you take your dish outside of your home service area, that home cell, and still get coverage. This portability, or roaming, is being rolled out around the world and is officially in Starlink Terms of Service for their standard package at the standard price. It's not an add-on, it's not restricted to their business offering, it's available to everyone. So the basics of the trick is that you use the map to find any location in a bright green cell. You don't need to live there, nothing will be shipped there, your credit card address doesn't need to be there. You can pick any address, pretty much. Then you go to starlink.com and you put in that address. It should allow you to place a full order immediately. Then you put your actual home address as the shipping and billing address. Starlink will ship out the user terminal to your home address, and once you get it, you can start using it at your home address, but in roaming mode. That gets you service immediately. Then you can try periodically on the website in your account to move your official Starlink service address to your home address. That's the basics of how it works. But there are some limitations you need to know. If you take a look at their terms of service, here's the section on portability, there are a couple things to pay close attention to. First is that Starlink doesn't guarantee where or when portability will be available. So even if it's working today, Starlink could temporarily disable roaming and still fit in here. And in the first clause, even if it's working in your service area, your service will be on a best effort basis. So if there's congestion with lots of users, you know, streaming Netflix in the evening, you as a roaming user are going to be one of the first ones who has their service slowed down to free up capacity for the, you know, users who are in their service area officially. If you're depending on this service for work or other critical uses, just be warned. Another rumor I've heard, unofficial, is that you need to be at your official service address when you first turn on the dish, so it can get its firmware update and initialize before roaming starts to work. I've heard this in a few places, but I myself have received a new rectangle dish and I turned it on for the first time around 150 kilometers or 100 miles-ish from its registered service address, and it did start working fine in roaming mode. Now, it did seem to take a little bit of extra time, maybe around 20 minutes before it started working, but it did start working, connect, good speed tests. This is actually the same rectangle dish that I covered in my teardown video here. 
Just in case, I'd recommend trying to find a service address that Bright Green sell when you order that's not too far away. Just in case you need to drive there and set up your dish for an hour just to let it get initialized. Finally, a lot of people have raised a kind of ethical objection to this trick. The basic idea is people who really need Starlink, who have no other good option, have been waiting for a long time, some since that very first February pre-order date, and they've been waiting patiently. And if other people are going and using this trick, maybe it's going to actually delay their service even longer. So you'll hear a lot of people kind of complaining about this technique that, you know, you really shouldn't use it because you're potentially taking hardware away or slowing down kind of official service availability from those users. I know a lot of people have been using this basic technique not even as a trick, but they just want to get the dish not even to use at their home address, but they need it kind of for an upcoming trip or, you know, a summer location that they're waiting to use and they want to get the dish now. The service address doesn't have a lot of congestion, but they want to get it shipped to their home address to get it all working. Or maybe RVers who don't actually need to use it at a fixed location, but they want to have that capability for mobility while they're driving. So I think everyone's circumstance is really different. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Should people be using this trick to get service now or should they just wait? In the end, I think you need to decide for yourself, but I do think it's amazing that Starlink is making this roaming functionality available to everyone with no extra cost, just part of the normal service as of now. Thank you everyone for watching. See you next time.